Okay, now, as part of our summer speaker series, we have uh, the only and the best and the only one, Sherry Friedlander. <laughs> Well, here I am giving you a Devar Torah on the Jewish holiday celebrating romance and love. Me? Most of you know me. Most of you know me that I'm single. I'm uninvolved in a relationship. I'm divorced. I'm deprived. I'm depraved. So you're probably scratching your head a little bit saying that's an odd choice for a speaker. And I get a little bit of scratching myself also. But preparing this, has really been food for thought for me. And by the way, one of the websites that I consulted, this is the honest to God truth, was called bangitout.com. <laughs> so help me, it was hilarious. So, you know, we don't always come to synagogue, I don't know about you, but rarely in any religion, I think the congregants come to services and the pastor or the rabbi or the priest says, Great job. You've been wonderful congregants this week. You did everything you were supposed to do. God is proud. He loves you. And I don't think that happens very much. Great job. I think we're usually reminded of the obligations that we have, the commandments that we need to fulfill to be good, decent human beings. Well, guess what? You're not off the hook tonight because to love is a biblical commandment. So you're obligated to do that. Um, Love is a moral value, and I know you thought I would get up here tonight and talk about love is commitment, and, you know, but that's not my personality. I find humor in everything. And by the way, I also read that in Jewish relationships that humor comes from the man and not from the woman. Who knew? I learned a lot from this, I'm telling you. Well, love is a moral value. It's a fundamental to doing right, and it is truly a responsibility and a value. It's mentioned in the, in the Bible in many forms, and particularly in the Ten Commandments, but the first one is love thy neighbor. I think it's really the core of morality, and I, I also know that all religions point to love. Christianity points to love. Islam points to love. Judaism points to love. And as a matter of fact, in Israel lately, they've been regenerating this holiday. So it's taken on a new importance. It's supposed to be a good day for weddings. You're supposed to dress in white, the women. Not, not the men, they don't have a chore, but the women are supposed to dress in white. They're supposed to go out in the garden, as the canner told you, he stole some of my thunder. thunder. And they're supposed to dance in the garden and to, in hopes of in preparation of meeting their Bashir. I gotta tell you, walking in the garden and dancing in white, it hadn't done it for me. <laughs> but you never know. So here I am and you see me on the Bayshore tonight doing a little jig in the garden. You know, don't be surprised if you see me carrying on this tradition, because I'm going to give it another shot. I've never got me anywhere but who knows. So I'm going to give it a little spin out here. And of course, it's the women who have to perform. The guys don't have to do anything but sit there and watch the women dance. We're used to that. Um, I also learned this, this holiday is linked with fertility. I am not linked with fertility. So again, scratching my head over the speaker. I think we all have a personal definition for love. Um, of course, on a serious note, I have to put that in, the, the most pure form of love is selfishness, no expectations, having someone's best interest, well-being. It is a divine kind of kindness, and it is understanding, and it is loyalty. And I think love really propels us for living life with a purpose. I really do believe that. Different cultures have different ways of celebrating love, and they have different words for love. It's funny, different cultures have different words for different things. Eskimos have a lot of words for snow. Uh, Arabs have a lot of words for camel. And there are about 173 definitions for love. And I venture to say there's many ways of expressing it and as many kinds of love. So maybe there's method in the madness of the legal best to seem to speak tonight. I'm always open to suggestions, advice. Here's my wife. I'm out there. One good piece of advice that I'll leave you with in uh, preparation for my talk tonight. Benjamin Franklin is one of my very, very favorite historians. And there's a quote, you can find tons of quotes from Henny Youngman on it. You young people out there have to Google Henny Youngman. But one thing that Benjamin Franklin said 
Keep thy eyes wide open before marriage and half shut afterward. So I thought that was very cool. And another thing about Mr. Franklin that I feel compelled to tell you is that he was home every night with Mrs. Franklin, but during the day he was running, he took us all over Boston and Philadelphia, making a lot of illegitimate children. So you might want to find other sources to quote about marriage. I do wish all of you a warmest, most heartfelt wish for continuation of every kind of fulfilling love and peace in your life. For many, many more mitzvahs of Tubab celebrations and for your happy, healthy Shabbat. Thank you. Amazing, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, I should go